In this video, I wanna go over three common mistakes that students make with slope, as well as give you a tip that you can use to your advantage. So in this case, we have 3y plus 6x equals eight. Now, this is a linear equation that is going to be in standard form. Now, typically, when we want to go ahead and find the slope or graph the line, we can work with it in standard form, but typically we want to be able to write things in slope-intercept form. So what that means is we need to take this equation and go ahead and rewrite it so therefore our y is going to be solved. Now, some students will make mistakes in this course uh, or doing this, but that's not really with the mistakes that I want to hit at. So let's just make sure we identify though the slope that we're gonna be looking for in y equals mx plus b form is going to be the m. So to go ahead and solve, all I need to do is undo what's happening to our y. So I'm gonna subtract a 6x on both sides and then I get a 3y is equal to a negative 6x plus eight divided by three on both sides. Um, let's see, negative six is divisible by three, that's going to be a negative two x. And then we have a plus and eight thirds. All right, so here comes the first mistake. The first mistake is to always take, no matter what fraction you see, and create that as the slope. Now, a lot of times when we think about slope, right, m, we take about that as the rise over the run, the change in the y over the change in the x. But ladies and gentlemen, the slope doesn't always necessarily be talked or looked at as terms of the fraction. So this isn't a big mistake, but a lot of students, if they're doing like a multiple choice problem or whatever else, they see a fraction and they immediately just say, that's the slope. A lot of times the fraction is a slope, but may, ladies and gentlemen, this is the constant, right? Your slope is always your coefficient of your x. So therefore, 8 thirds is not it, right? Our negative two is going to be our slope. So don't make sure you just always pick fractions as a slope. That is a huge mistake. I see it all the time, especially when students are just starting out. But that's kind of a, a basic mistake. A lot of students will do it because they get used to learning fractions and y-intercepts and they don't want their y-intercept to be a fraction, right? They know slope is supposed to be fractions or most commonly is, so they unfortunately will choose the wrong one. Now let's get into ones that are much more common. And the much more common one is going to be when you have integers uh, or creating your fraction or your slope as an integer. Okay, so what do I mean by that? Well, students know that slope is going to be rise over run. So what are we going to do when we have a integer? And let's just pick it as two because I'm gonna get to the negative here in just a second. So how do we rewrite two as a fraction? Well, there's many different ways you can write it, right? You could say four divided by two, right? You could rewrite it as a four divided by two. You could rewrite it as a 10 divided by five, whatever may be the case. But the easiest, the simplest way to do this, ladies and gentlemen, is just to put a two over a one right? Because two divided by one is going to be a one. So whenever you have an integer slope and there's no fraction, just put it over one. Now you have your change in your y over your change in your x, right? You have the rise over the run. Now you can go and use that to be able to graph. But you guys can see the negative and that is going to be our third mistake. Now the big thing with negative slope is students just don't know where do I put the negatives? So let's kind of play a little game. If I had a negative eight divided by four, what is that answer going to be? Negative two. Well, what about if I took a negative eight over a four? That is also going to be a negative two. Well, what about if I took a positive eight over a negative four? That answer is also negative two. What about if I took a negative eight over a negative two? That's going to equal to a, I'm sorry, negative four, where am I getting the two? What about if I took that over a negative four? That is going to be a positive two. So when you have a negative in front, like here, you can apply the negative to the top, you can apply the negative to the bottom, just don't apply it to both the top as well as the bottom. This is critically important when you are graphing, right? So what that means is if your change in your y is going to be negative, that means your change in your x is going to be positive. If your change in your y is positive, that just means your change in x is going to be negative. And the, basically the way that that turns out is, like if here's I have a point, right? I can go up and to the left, or I can go down and to the right. But what I want you to understand is these two points are still going to lie on the same line. So it doesn't matter where the negative goes. Just go ahead and pick one. So you have one in front and you wanna be like, well, where should I graph this? Sometimes what we're trying to graph is gonna dictate the direction we're gonna go. But if you don't know or it gets confusing, just pick one. So those are the three mistakes that I most commonly see inside the classroom. Now let's go into a little bit of a tip. This was in standard form. Most students kind of overlook standard form. They're like, why are we learning this? What, what is so important about standard form? They might already be aware of slope intercept form and that is the most common form that we use for graphing. So they just kind of forget about this. 
But if you have something in standard form and you want to be able to find the slope, yes, could you go ahead and solve for y and then identify and say, oh, it's a negative two, if that was a problem? Of course you could. That's really not that hard of you know, a process. But sometimes when you're dealing with fractions or you can make mistake number one, it can get confusing. So when you already have something in standard form, all I want you to be able to identify is just notice there's a relationship to be able to identify our slope given our a and our b. Simply, our tip is, if you want to find the slope of a line that's already in standard form, just take m, which is going to be your slope, is going to be equal to the opposite of a divided by b, and you are all set.